So another news article was released about the new life and death expansion pack. And this is on the Sims 4 website. So I'll include a link in the description if you want to read it yourself. But it says every ending means a new beginning, which begs the question, what awaits Sims in the beyond? This All Hallows Eve, we invite you to uncover the secret to a fuller Sim life and explore what lies beyond with the Sims 4 Life and Death Expansion Pack. Enter into the haunting realm of Ravenwood, which I guess is the name of the new world, which three distinct neighborhoods await exploration, each with its own connection to the shadowy passage between life and what's next. Your Sims will have the chance to create a bucket list, resolve lingering unfinished business in the afterlife, wield new ghostly powers to unleash mayhem, kindness, or something in between, and even undergo a rebirth. Allow us to welcome you to Ravenwood, where the veil between life and death is especially thin. Here you'll find three unique neighborhoods where Sims walk shoulder to shoulder with ghost Sims who have unfinished business. Begin your journey in the Crow's Crossing, an eerie village rumored to be frequented by ghosts and regular hauntings. Venture down cobbled roads where you will discover local grave markers, meet the mysterious merchant peddling an assortment of curios and collectibles, or happen upon the Before You Die casket sale. Sims seeking solace can visit the town cemetery, dapple with headstones and graves to pay respect to the Sims who once walked these roads and may be still doing so, or disappear into a crypt to share a special moment with the lover or tell a ghost story. With the Ravenwood Family Day or the Crow's Crossing Celebration of Life, festivals, haunted houses, and a ghostly guarded wishing well, there's plenty to explore. I want to stop there because I'm curious in this paragraph, they talked about a lot of different activities. So try and try before you did buy casket sale. And there was a clip in the trailer where it seemed like there was just caskets in the middle of the town hall. It sounds like you can just buy them. How morbid though. Like, I don't want to walk around town. It's like, Hey, do you want a casket? It's like, um, no. What you mean? I don't know how I feel about that. And then it sounds like you can disappear into a crypt. So is it a rabbit hole? You can't actually see into the crypts. I'm not really sure what that meant. Sounds like two new events, the Ravenwood Family Day and the Crow's Crossing Celebration of Life. So two new festivals. I don't know if those are just to memorialize Sims that have passed or like what's going on. So that's kind of weird. And then they refer to haunted houses. But again, are those rabbit hole or are those like open something that you can go through? For a slower pace, Sims can stroll the rolling hills and idyllic countryside of Whispering Glen. Steeped in ruins and rumors, it's a paradise for collectors and historians alike. Explore the local crypt, investigate the tarot tomb shrine at the base of the ruins, garden in the shared community plots, or collect gatherables. Gather collectibles. Whatever you do, stay until the moon rises. Each night, Willow Glen hosts the local moon reverie festival where sims can swim under the moonlight share stories at a bonfire and dance things get a little wild during the full moon where clothing is completely optional okay very very interesting here another crypt but it sounds like still a rabbit hole um maybe it's so in horse ranch expansion pack there was that like D D style like you would go into a cave and then there's all these pop-ups that would have you like explore through the cave but you didn't actually see it so that's what this sounds like to me gardening in a shared community plot reminds me of growing together where we have the community lots so i don't know if it's going to function the same way and then we saw in the trailer she was floating in a pond or a lake or something so that sounds like the moon revelry festival so hopefully it's populated with sims I know it's going to sound kind of whatever, but I don't really want Sims from Ravenwood. Like, I don't want to be in this festival. And then, like, Bella Goth shows up. It's like, it should be Sims are local to this town or this area. I don't know how to control that, though. Now, there's something otherworldly about Morning Vale. Maybe it's the way the wind howls through the moss-draped trees, the eerie clang from the bell tower at odd hours or the sentient plants. No matter the reason, many ghosts come, choose to call this place home. The Grim Reaper has been known to wander now and then. Here, the Sims can take a dip in the baleful bog to have an out-of-body experience, 
or transition into rebirth, participate in local customs at the thinned Festy Vale, and make peace with their mortality at the Afterlife Anonymous meetup. Whatever happens, a trip to this neighborhood is sure to send a shiver down the spine. That's really weirdly worded. So it sounds like there's another festival, but I'm not sure why it's like that. Um, and an Afterlife Anonymous meetup. So is it like a place for ghosts to meet up? Is it a special lot? Like, I don't quite understand that. Very confusing. Uh, Sims only live once, right? There's a lot to do in a Sims lifetime. It's a little time. Keep track of everything Sims want to do to live their life to the fullest with Soul's Journey, an all-encompassing reward system uniting aspirations and wants. A Sims Soul's Journey allows them to achieve rewards as they fulfill goals, with the ultimate reward being the ability to rebirth a Sim with a special burning soul trait after their passing. Sims who are reborn after completing their soul's journey can unlock past development skills, traits, and infant milestones, depending on the age they come back as. They also find special ties to Sims from their past life. Players can ensure Sims achieve fulfillment by creating and completing their bucket list. There are multiple ways for any young adult or older Sim to create a bucket list. If left alone, the bucket list will naturally populate over time based on their traits. There's also new interactions on the computer and journal, which allows Sims to create, to write a random goal themselves, write a goal from a category, or write a specific goal. Completing a bucket list has powerful rewards, including the ability to experience rebirth. As a ghost, Sims may even continue their soul's journey to complete their unfinished business, which, if completed, will result in an even more powerful form or rebirth with the burning soul trait. For some Sims, leaving life is hard to leaving life behind is hard to do. With the Sims 4 Life and Death expansion pack, players can let their Sims linger on as a playable household member, or they can wreak havoc on the living or lend a helping hand. Ghost Sims who build special connections with each other can also pair up for a special spectral woohoo inside objects of all shapes and sizes. As Sims adjust to their playable ghost Sims form. They can customize their looks and create a sim, build ghost powers, and even earn still fear or goodwill essence from their interactions with the living to make simoleons. Almost there now. Uh, sims looking for a new line of work can now dabble in death with two new careers, the Reaper profession and the Undertaker career. In the Reaper profession, sims with an affinity for the afterlife can become grim turns and work their way up to Reaper as they make a career out of facil facilitating the next phase for of life for Sims. Work with Grimm at the Netherworld Department of Death, NWDD, and even head off into the field. Sims in this profession can experience Reaper training with an all-around good guy training dummy, Kenny. Maintain Grimm turn Sims... I don't know how to say that word. Scythes, maybe? Practice reaping souls on practice dummies and determine causes of death for reaped souls. At higher levels, Sims in this career can even determine which souls they reap and which they will return to life. Once retrieved, souls can be placed in the Netherworld portal to meet the soul quota. Grim turns to meet the soul quota are eligible to become Employee of the Month. The Undertaker career is a classic career in which the Sims serve both the living and the dead. From grave digging and embalming, Sims who pursue a career in the funeral industry ensure all Sims can move on in peace. Specializing in this before afterlife care prepares Sims for difficult moments like discussing end of life services or contemplating existence. Six feet in, they are rewarded with a plague mask, a Murphy membrane bust, or a corpus, com Ooh, corpus commendation plaque to honor their achievements. It has two branches that Sims can go down, either mortician or funeral director. So this sounds like rabbit hole, because usually rabbit hole careers have two branches that it can go down. But who can be sure? Okay, mortality and the afterlife can now impact the way Sims interact with the world around them and to help create unexpected and exciting stories. 
experience the ghost historian aspiration, unlock horror novels, and receive the Ghost Whisperer reward trait. Visit any lot in the, with the Hollowed Grounds lot trait. Try out any of the three new traits. So, Maccabe, Taste by Death, and Skeptic. Delve into the Thanatology skill or experience life and death's new death type, Death by Murder of Crows. There's a lifetime of stories to tell. Depare, to prepare for their departure from the realm of the living, since can create a will at the town hall and crows crossing from the computer or at the family day festival. Through wills, Sims will sign heirlooms to specific individuals, leave personal notes, set emotional reactions for loved ones reading the will, specify how they want their remains to be handled, make funeral planning requests, and designate other Sims to care for their pets or children. If the entire household passes away, Sims can choose to donate their simoleons to charity or to another known household. Wills can be updated at any point in a Sims' lifetime. Losing someone is never easy, even for the Sims. The Sims 4 Love Life and Death Expansion Pack now allows Sims to grieve, to experience four grief types. Denial, holding it together, anger, and blues. The grief type a sim receives is based off of their traits and, if applicable, their relationship. Grief will have its own set of behavior for sims to navigate and normally takes hold after the mourning period has ended. Not just death causes grief. Tough situations such as the loss of a family member or a close friend, divorce, getting fired from a career, or the loss of a pet, if you have horse ranch, cats and dogs, expansion packs, can trigger grief. Grief. Sims experiencing grief can reach out for help from other Sims for comfort. They can also attend grief counseling. Sims can console about death to other Sims or cooperatively cope positively with grief by doing creative or productive activities while in the grieving process. When at a funeral, Sims can offer awkward sympathies or offer a sympathetic joke. Once a Sim has passed away, funeral events can be planned and held. When planning a funeral, players can choose which Sims attend and who is the ceases, select the dress code and color for guests to arrive in, pick from a variety of 14 different activities, and determine the location and time. Examples of some activities include giving a lighthearted eulogy, lighting candles, planting something, or serving food. Each funeral is unique, and sometimes ghost Sims will even appear at their own funeral. Sims can also honor the dearly departed by setting up memorial displays with a portrait of the deceased, selecting which urn or tombstone they want, decorating a gravesite, leaving them a message on a special memorial statue, or in entering their urns in crypts. I'm going to go back up on this one because there's actually so much going on, um, and I'm actually a little bit confused. So, coming back up here to the beginning... Unlock horror novels. I'm assuming it's for people with a certain level of writing skill. Not 100% sure. Uh, new reward trait. New lot type. Three new traits. A new skill. New death. So we are getting a lot of new things. The will is interesting. So at least it tells us something about Family Day Festival. So Family Day Festival, I guess, is preparing to die. I mean, that's what it sounds like if you're writing a will. It doesn't explain what the heirlooms are, but you can leave them to specific people. You can leave notes. Set emotional reactions for the ones who are reading the will is interesting. Why would we be setting a reaction? They should just react based on our skill, you know, based on their relationship, I guess. Um... I wonder if there's going to be a, a moodlet or a sentiment if you don't do what they wanted. Like if your sim asks for a urn and you put them in a crypt, are they going to like come back and haunt you? <laughs> are they going to just, you know, is there going to be something that happens if you don't follow the request um, or what that looks like? I'm also a little confused with the four grief types. So I don't know if that's something we're setting or something the sim is setting based on these traits. So denial, holding it together, anger, and blues. I'm assuming Sims that have like a gloomy trait might have the blues, where somebody who has like hothead trait may be angry. Hope it's not just down to traits, though. I would like it to be based on their relationship. So if they were really close, like, you know, a parent, sibling, something, you know, loved one, it's probably going to be more 
blues or anger but if it's like oh this is just my coworker, it's like mm, probably holding it together i mean i don't you know i do find it a little disappointing that the loss of a pet doesn't include how there's living so like if you lose the chickens or the cow or the llama that doesn't trigger anything so only the horse ranch and cats and dogs expansion pack and then i wonder if grief counseling is going to be like post counseling from love struck was where it was like a pop-up or a series of pop-ups and your sims just kind of like walk off the lot to do it so we'll see um definitely interesting and then of course they're still pushing this um you know pre-order stuff so i mean i can see some definitely some good qualities it sounds like this one is an active job the reaper profession but the Undertaker career sounds like, a, they say it's a classic career with two branches. So that sounds like a rabbit hole. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of good information for sure. I still want to see more examples of the bucket lists. So they didn't really give us a ton of examples of that. And then being reborn, it says, depending on what age they come back as, do you have a say in what age you come back as? Or like, what does that look like? So that's going to tie into Infant Milestones. So this is going to be really the Growing Together expansion pack seems to go hand in hand with this because it seems like it's all about your Sims relationships, their dynamics, their milestones, their traits, their accomplishments. Like it seems to be very generational gameplay and family oriented gameplay. So I'm not still haven't made a firm opinion yet. I want to see some more information for sure before I really settle into anything um, I think the next gameplay trailer is October 17th, and that's going to help us decide. And then they usually do some sort of developer live stream, which shows off a little bit more. But let me know in the comments below, do this, does this article, this is now the second blog post with more details after the original trailer came out. Does these Do these details make any difference to you? Does it make you make it like sound more interesting? Do you want to play more? Or are you kind of turned off to it? Let me know in the comments below.